It's the magic of math here, and today we're talking proportional. We're going to consider a real-world situation and an alternate real-world situation and determine whether or not the two are, have a proportional relationship. Today, in our lesson, we have two objectives. The first is that we want to be able to identify whether a relationship is pro proportional between two quantities using a bar diagram. The second is we'll be able to determine if ratios are equivalent to decide if the relationship is proportional. So to do this, we want to be thinking about this question today as we proceed through the lesson. I want you to think about what does it mean for two relationships to be proportional? To answer this mathematically, we need to understand the meaning of proportional. Let's begin by looking at proportional relationship. So here is a given relationship. A smoothie recipe uses four parts strawberries to three parts bananas. Notice it says parts, not ounces or cups. So Lena, using this recipe, decides to blend 12 cups of strawberries with nine cups of bananas for a large batch. Knowing that we don't wanna change the flavor profile, so we want to keep it proportional. So if you have your grandmother's famous chocolate chip cookie recipe, and you wanna make a larger batch, you need to understand proportionality in order to do it and not change the flavor or the outcome of the cookie. So to determine if Lena's smoothie mix is proportional to the original recipe, we need to understand about a proportional relationship. And what is it? So a proportional relationship exists between two quantities when their ratios are constant. Now, to understand what constant means, let's look at a more simple relationship. So here on Tuesday, you jogged four miles in one hour. Then on Saturday, you jogged eight miles in two hours. We can look at this pretty easily to see if there's a proportional relationship, if the relationship is constant between the two. So we've learned about unit rate when the second quantity is one. So four miles in one hour is our unit rate. So after two hours, we should have run double. So four miles each hour, giving us four plus four is eight miles in two hours. So we can see that this is a constant increase over time and it's a proportional relationship. Now let's talk about using a bar diagram to, to determine a proportional relationship given what we know about proportionality. So we want to use, be able to have a different method when our relationships have a little messier number. So we have here a certain shade of green paint is made by mixing five parts of yellow paint to two parts of blue paint. Marcus mixes 10 cups of yellow paint with four cups of blue paint to make the same color. And we want to know, does Marcus's mixture represent a proportional relationship to the original recipe? So let's see what we're going to do here. We're going to start with our bar, bar diagram given our, our original recipe, for lack of a better way of saying it. So they tell us to make this specific shade of green paint that we need to have five parts of yellow paint. So we're going to make a bar diagram with five equal boxes that represent each of these five parts. So a total of five parts for our yellow paint to make the green paint. Now we know the second quantity is two parts of blue paint. So we're gonna have one part, two parts, and this is gonna represent our two parts of blue paint. So when we mix this all together, we're gonna to get a specific shade of green paint. So now we wanna look at what Marcus did, and is his green paint going to be the same shade? Did he keep the proportional relationship? So we know that for Marcus, he did 10 cups of yellow paint. So he needs to be able to take that yellow paint and put it equally into five parts. So here's our five boxes and he did 10 cups. So 10 divided by these five parts would be two. So that means each part for his recipe is two cups of paint. That means that when we go to his second part of the bar diagram, that he's gonna have to evenly do this with four cups of blue paint. So let's look at that. We're gonna do our two parts, and each part is determined here, it has to be two cups. 
So if I do two cups and two cups, that's four cups. So yes, Marcus's relationship is proportional to the original recipe, and both of these will have the same shade of green. All right, now it's your turn. We're going to go back to the smoothie recipe, and I want you to determine if Lena's smoothie mix is proportional to the original recipe. I'd like you to pause the video here, create a bar diagram to represent this, to determine if the relationship is proportional. Good luck. Welcome back. So let's go through our solution together. So we're going to start with the smoothie recipe that was given to us. So we know that it starts with four parts of strawberries. So we're going to have four boxes, each one representing one part of the total of four parts strawberries. Our second part to the recipe is to have three parts in the smoothie be bananas. So let's add our three boxes, one, two, three parts, and that's going to represent our three parts that are bananas. Now we want to go over and make a bar diagram for Lena. So Lena starts out with 12 cups of strawberries. She needs to be able to divide this between four. So let's create our four boxes and understand that these four boxes have to total the 12 cups. So 12 divided by four would mean each part was three cups. So here's her four parts. Each part is three cups for a total of 12 cups, three, six, nine, 12. Now let's move to bananas. We know from our original recipe that the bananas, the nine cups of bananas, needs to equal the three parts. So here's our three part boxes, and we know that the total needs to be nine cups, and each box needs to be three cups to remain in this relationship. So three, six, nine, nine cups. So yes, Lena's smoothie recipe is proportional to the original. All right, here's another one for you. I would like you to determine if a trail mix that is made with two parts peanuts and five parts of raisins, if Zane makes a batch using six cups of peanuts and 15 cups of raisins, is Zane's batch in a proportional relationship with the original trail mix? Please pause the video here, create your buyer diagrams, and come back to check your work. Good luck. Welcome back. Let's start with making our bar diagram for the original recipe for the trail mix. So we know it starts with two parts peanuts. So we're gonna do our two boxes, one part, one part, and that is our two parts for our peanuts. Our second part of the recipe is five parts raisins. So now we're gonna go and do one part, two part, three, four, five parts, and this represents our five parts that are gonna be raisins in our trail mix. Now let's look at Zane's recipe. So Zane starts with six cups of peanuts, but we know we have to put that into two equal parts. So here, we're gonna do our six cups of peanuts and divide six cups of peanuts into two equal parts. We know that that has to be three and three. Six divided by two is three. So three cups each part for his peanuts. And now we're gonna to have to do our second part in five parts, that's what we learned here, five equal parts. And we know that each one of these parts, given what we did with our peanuts, these would have to be three cups and equal 16. So let's come down here and know that these five parts need to be equal to 16 and each needs to be three, just like our peanuts. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. Uh-oh, we're short a cup. So that means Zane's recipe is not proportional to the original trail mix because he has a non-relationship, a non-proportional relationship here because he added too many raisins to the peanuts. So even though he still has a trail mix, it's not proportional to the recipe. All right. Now let's talk about equivalent ratios and proportional relationships. Here's another strategy to determine if two real world relationships are proportional. We have the recipe for an apple pie that uses a ratio of seven apples to three fourths cup of sugar. We're deciding that we're gonna make several pies. We're gonna use 21 apples instead of seven, 
and we decide to add three and three fourths cups of sugar. And we want to know is the relationship between the apples and the sugar still the same because we don't want to change the flavor profile. So here's where we're going to go and look at our first ratio seven apples to three fourths of a cup of sugar. So instead of a bar diagram, I'm going to write a ratio seven fraction bar three fourths. So remember, this is a complex fraction. We've dealt with that in a previous video, but it's still a ratio seven apples to three fourths of a cup of sugar. And we want to know is that proportional to this quantity? We want to know 21 apples and three and three fourths cups of sugar. And we're questioning is this relationship between the apples and the sugar the same as the original recipe? So to do this, we're going to simplify our complex fractions using division. So we know that seven multiplied by three is 21. So we did three times the amount of apples. So now we want to know if this three and three fourths is three times three fourths. So I can see three and three fourths that it looks proportional, but if we do the math, let's check it out. So three fourths multiplied by three, remember three over one is three. Three times three is nine, four times one is four, giving us nine fourths. Four goes into nine two times with one left over. So this is actually two and one fourths cup of sugar if it were gonna be in a proportional relationship. So we can see that no, there's way more sugar in here than we needed. Actually a whole cup and a half more of sugar. So remember, if we're gonna triple, which means multiply by three, the apples, we need to do the same to the sugar. And now it's your turn. So here is a builder using a mix of three parts of gravel to two parts of cement to create concrete. For a bigger job, they combined seven and a half pounds of gravel and five pounds of cement. And again, we wanna know, is the builder's new mix proportional to the original concrete mixture? So here's where you pause the video. I'd like you to use complex fractions, ratios, to mathematically determine if it's a proportional relationship. Pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we're going to write our ratios. We have three parts of gravel to two parts of cement. So our first ratio, three to two. Three parts of gravel to two parts of cement. And now we're going to make a bigger quantity and we want to know if it's proportional. So our second ratio is we're going to have seven and a half pounds of gravel and five pounds of cement. So seven and a half to five. And we want to know if these are equal. So I can see that three halves simplifies to one and one half. Now I'm going to divide this ratio to determine what this is equivalent to because I have a complex fraction here. So let's do some long division. We're going to do 7.5 divided by 5. 7.5 divided by 5. 5 goes into 7 once. 1 times 5 is 5. 7 subtract 5 is 2. Then we bring down our 5. 5 goes into 25 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25. We subtract 25 from 25 and get 0. So we know that 7 and a half divided by 5 is 1.5, which is also 1 and 1 half. So yes, this relationship is proportional. And that is how we determine if any real world relationship is proportional to another real world relationship by using bar diagrams and complex fractions or ratios. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. I hope you have a great day and come back soon.